What is up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Tape Tune, the show where we talk about some of my favorite horror movies in my VHS collection. I'm Larry Downs, and this week we talk about Dario's 1977 Creepy Coven classic. This movie is renowned worldwide as one of the greatest horror classics ever made. Some people would consider this in the subcategory of giallo films, which are Italian murder mysteries. But just because this has glamorous Italian actresses with dubbed over English and mysterious leather gloved villains cutting people's closely zoomed in necks, but don't be fooled, this is a straight up horror movie with a true artist's eye behind the camera. But before we break it down, let's get into the guts. This movie was directed by horror movie maestro Dario Argento, who's brought us a ton of other classics, including Tenebre, Phenomena with little Jennifer Connelly, and Demons. And to help him write this, we have double whammy actress and writer Daria Nicolodi, who's helped Argento write a ton of other movies. There's only room for one star in this movie, and not to knock the acting ability of everyone else, but Suspiria really just focuses on starry-eyed Susie Banyan, played by none other than Jessica Harper. Harper hasn't had a ton of roles, namely one other one, Phantom of the Paradise, which is just absolutely excellent, I would highly suggest it, but that's enough to put her on the Hall of Fame around here at the Tape Tune. But what's this movie about? Put on your dancing shoes and let's find out. Roll the film. Susie Banyan is an American ballet student just landing in Germany because she's off to the Tans Dance Academy to perfect her skills. She left Kennedy Airport at 9 in the morning and arrived at 10.40 p.m. local time. How do we know all of this exposition when the movie hasn't even started yet? Because in true Argento fashion, he likes to hit us with an opening monologue before letting the goblins loose for one of the most memorable tracks of the movie. After Susie hails a taxi that takes her to the school, she sees a young girl yelling frantically before running out of the building and into the distance. As Susie tries to get in, she's denied access and must find a hotel for the night. The next day she comes back to the academy and meets the headmistress only to find out that the girl she saw last night was brutally murdered. Susie gets settled in in a friend's apartment because there's no rooms currently ready and she starts attending the school. Days go by and things just start to get weird. Susie starts feeling randomly sick and weak, maggots start falling from the school ceilings, the school's pianist dog kills him, and after Sarah tells Susie that she needs to tell her something about the notes the murdered girl left for her, alluding that there's much more going on in the school, and then she's killed. With some research, Susie finds out that the school was once an old witch's coven and that it's probably the cause of everything happening. How will Susie put a stop to the murderous coven of witches that secretly want her dead? She won't be able to dance her way around this one in Suspiria. Suspiria is one of those rare treats where we get a great combination of slasher and artsy horror flicks all in one. It's got some blood and guts to appease the horror hounds, but it's also done really tastefully and stylized to appease the hard critics. Every shot in this movie is so well done. The backgrounds, set colors, placement of characters, and not to mention the heavy hammer horror lighting and soundtrack provided by none other than fucking Goblin. Goblin's always popping up in other Argento movies or European horror flicks to give us cool, spooky synth background music, and in this one, they don't disappoint. What Suspiria lacks in powerful dialogue, it more than makes up for it in overall presence. Susie Banyan is put in a constant state of unease and exists in this world of childhood nightmares that Argento so perfectly executes. Feeling alone and helpless, unsure and easy about what lies ahead in the new world, the screen is oozing with these feelings right off the rip as soon as we start the movie, and it carries on the whole time. For all these reasons and more, Suspiria is a perfect fit for us here at the Tape Tune. Here's some facts about Suspiria. Director Dario Argento's original idea was that the ballet school would accommodate young girls no younger than 12 years. However, the studio and producer, Salvatore Argento, his father, denied his request because a film this violent involving children would almost certainly be banned. Dario raised the age limit of the girls to 20 years, but did not rewrite the script, hence some of the characters being really naive or occasionally childlike. He also put all the doorknobs at about the same height as the actress's head, so they would have to raise their arms in order to open the doors, just like children. Argento composed this spooky soundtrack with the band Goblin and blasted on set all the time to elicit a truly scared performance from the actors. According to Jessica Harper, since the film was going to be dubbed over principal photography anyway, sound was rarely ever used. She said it was pretty weird being on set, shooting, and hearing a stagehand hammering away at something across the studio. The woman playing headmistress Helena Marcos was not credited. According to Harper, she was just a 90-year-old prostitute that Argento found wandering the streets of Rome. Thank you all so much for tuning into another episode of The Tape Tomb. If you liked this week's episode, make sure you click that like and subscribe button down below or drop me a comment telling me what movie I should talk about in future episodes. Make sure you tune in every other week to our sister series, Airlock Shock, starring Nick Haskin. He's constantly talking about cool sci-fi movies just like we do horror here at The Tape Tomb. 
I'm Larry Downs. Stay spooky, my friends, and we will see you in the sequel.